On this episode, we check out some of the flavors tastemakers are bringing to San Francisco's Chase Center. This yeah. is delicious. Then it's off to the farm to experience sumo-sized citrus. Plus, it's farm to beauty and organic approach to skincare. We are farm to beauty all the way. And see the meaning and intention behind every slice at Federalist Pizza. Hello and welcome to California Bountiful. I'm your host, Aubrey Aquino, and today we're coming to you from the city by the bay, San Francisco. Here in the heart of Mission Bay is Thrive City. It's a space where the community can come to relax, connect, and find inspiration. There's great shopping and dining too. And behind me is Chase Center. This is also known as home to the NBA's Golden State Warriors. So let's kick things off with a taste of the unique flavors fans can find at game time. San Francisco's Chase Center is breaking the mold when it comes to their in-arena eats. Food is the great equalizer. It brings people together. Phil Hastings is proud to see Chase Center be among the first arenas to curate a food program that directly reflects the local culture. We wanted to make sure and bring the taste of San Francisco here, so really tying into the diversity and the local entities and the small businesses that we had here, that was key to us. We wanted this building to be the San Francisco Bay Area. And the proof is in their Tastemakers program, giving locally owned small businesses a bigger platform to share food concepts, offering diverse tastes of the Bay, which challenge traditional arena fare. This is the Longanisa Dirty Dog. Longanisa is a Filipino breakfast sausage. Still reminiscent also of like an American backyard barbecue, you know, a hot dog. But this one's like a little more garlicky, a little sweet and like a little bit tart from like the acid of the aioli and onions. JP and Kristen own and run Syrup Shop, which features feel-good Filipino flavors. Dip. Play a little dip, and then just, just go for it. Yeah. A barbecue chicken skewer, so that's got like some smoky flavors, um, and then a sweet banana barbecue sauce. We like to talk about making Filipino-American food, and so for us, the American piece has been our experience growing up in the Bay Area. Uh, and it's not like your typical like burgers, fries only, but like the diversity that we've experienced growing up here. For people to walk through and be like, oh my gosh, there's lumpia, or like, oh, there's like longanisa. Like to see those words in spaces where you don't normally get to feel seen has been really unique. It really does feel special to know that an organization as big as like the Warriors and Chase Center is doing something to try to like support and make it sustainable for small business to be a part of something really big and that has a huge like cultural context. The Tastemakers program also features soulful fare from Bouge Cali, while Kachina Malonga adds traditional Argentinian options. There's Algerian eats from Kaima, authentic Mexican favorites, plus this Jamaican staple. Our lentil patty, which has like the red lentils, Burberry spice, which is like an Ethiopian spice, and ginger, garlic. It has a nice little kick to it. And it's also good for vegetarians. And people that aren't vegetarians too, they get surprised um, because of the texture of it. So it's like you're not missing meat at all. So flaky and buttery, this yeah. is delicious. The crust itself is a butter crust and the filling, it's filled with like just spice. So Burberry, the peppers and everything, but it balances itself out. And then you're gonna be like, oh, well, I've never tried this before. This is good, you know, this is what I've been missing. And Shawnee Jones is more than happy to fill that void with peaches patties. And now I feel like just so proud to share it with everyone here. Whether they've had Jamaican food or not, or had exposure to the culture, I'm just very proud to do that. And usually it's always a good response. People are like, oh, well, this reminds me of home, or it brings a smile to their face, or they're just like excited. So I think that I'm kind of like a trailblazer <laughs> right now, as far as bringing Jamaican food to 
the actual stadium. So whether you visit Chase Center to catch the NBA champion Golden State Warriors in action or to experience a concert event, the arena's tastemakers will have your appetite covered no matter what you crave. We have this amazing sports and entertainment venue where people are in the building and they have a team to cheer for or a band to cheer on. And what better to bring it all together and wrap it up than with a great sandwich or a drink or just something that, and that's what food does. It completes an experience and it is something that you remember. It ties a memory to an event and that's something that we just love here. Straight ahead on California Bountiful, a juicy segment that's pulling beauty out of California's bounty. But first, citrus is in season and we'll introduce you to a special variety that's sumo sweet after the break. California Bountiful is brought to you by the California Farm Bureau. We need someone to be there, knowing they'll always care. Someone who lights your way each and every day Doing what you love is everything So we can celebrate the joy it brings There's so much to protect in our lives That's why Nationwide is on your side Golden Sky Country Music Festival coming to Sacramento October 14th and 15th with Eric Church. All you gotta do is put a drink in my hand. John Party. Marin Morris. Parker McCullough and Jordan Davis. Lady Wilson, Winona Judd, and more. Golden Sky Country Music Festival at Discovery Park in downtown Sacramento. Passes starting at $10 down at GoldenSkyFestival.com. Welcome back. This citrus is enormous, easy to peel, seedless, and incredibly sweet. This loved fruit is also on trend, always sporting a signature top knot. Check out the Sumo story. This is the world's most pampered fruit. It's a sumo. Sumo. Sumo citrus. So I'm addicted to this. The thing about the fruit that's so special is that it's one of the best tasting pieces of citrus you'll ever eat. I don't think I could live without it. It's somewhere in between what a mandarin tastes like and an orange, with a little background of a little bit of spiciness, which is the acid that's there that makes it pop. It's just one of those experiences that you can't help but smile after you take that first bite. Sumo citrus season is a busy time for grower Roger Smith. As a farmer, it's the most difficult thing to raise of any kind of citrus. I'm a fourth generation citrus grower, been around citrus my whole life, and it is a burden to make the perfect sumo citrus fruit for the consumer. Tremendous advances on the farm have created this miracle. They are the result of a miraculous agriculture. The tree is a difficult tree to farm. It takes a lot of work to reduce crop to get the fruit big enough. We have to take fruit off of the tree to be able to get the size that the consumer really likes. Dubbed the world's most loved fruit, its roots don't stem from the Golden State. So sumo citrus was originally bred in Japan and it's amazing to believe it was done 50 years ago in 1972 and it was introduced to California in 1998 and it sat on the shelf for about a decade before the Griffith family found it. Resource Citrus Nursery produced the trees and a number of growers were put together to plant it out into the California areas of Lindsay and Exeter in that area. We've been able to develop uh, techniques here that have made the fruit really superior to what even the Japanese have been able to do, but that's mainly because our weather is better, not because we're better farmers than the Japanese. With these techniques cultivated by expert citrus growers, the high-maintenance sumo is pampered from seed to table. 
We have pruning techniques that we do to be able to make sure that the trees have good fruit distribution throughout the tree. We have strong nutritional programs that ensure great root health and great fertility for the trees to be able to support these big fruit. We don't harvest sumo citrus like any other type of mandarin or citrus that's, that's done in California. Everything is double clipped to ensure that we don't damage the fruit. It's very gently handled by the harvesters. It's a process that boasts both high standards and agricultural responsibility. Sustainability is really an important part of sumo citrus and the grower group that is sumo citrus. We all live here. This is our home. This is our livelihoods. And for most of us, this is a generational thing. Agronomist Chris Tomlinson explains cycling carbon through the profile while still maintaining it on the farms. So on the sumo citrus, because we are manicuring these trees and making sure that we're maintaining that fruit wood and that life of the tree, we do take off a lot of prunings. And all those prunings are then reincorporated back into the orchard itself. We're recycling all those nutrients that they took to grow that wood. Uh, we're using a lot of organic amendments and things like that to go back into the soil going to more of a regenerative standpoint where we're making sure that we're taking care of the microbes in the soil. We're adding that carbon back that's really important for soil life. We're seeing that, that translates into a healthier tree that then provides stronger pieces of fruit that get to the table and really possess that eating quality that is sumo citrus. An experience you must eat to understand. But the truth is the uglier that fruit is, the better it's gonna taste. Sumo citrus is really unique because it's very easy to peel, totally seedless, has this amazing aroma when you first pop the top knot off and then you start to peel it. We call it backseat friendly. You don't have to have a paper towel or a wet wipes after you've done eating it. Your hands are completely clean and it's easy to share with friends. But the big experience, of course, is when you pop it in your mouth. Pretty cool to hear how the sumo landed in the Golden State, and it's good for you. Hi, my name is Tawny. I am a registered dietitian, cookbook author, and the owner of the popular food blog, Pearl's Corner. Today we are talking all about citrus. Citrus is delicious, healthy, refreshing, and packed with essential vitamins, minerals, and antioxidants. Citrus is famously rich for being a vitamin C powerhouse, but they also contain fiber, calcium, potassium, and B vitamins. Citrus can support your heart health thanks to the flavonoids, keep you hydrated thanks to the high water content, and it may help fight inflammation thanks to the anti-inflammatory phytochemicals, and it can help improve your iron absorption. So there is no arguing that it's a great idea to begin adding some citrus into your daily routine. You can start today and try my healthier twist on orange chicken or my lemon cookies for a yummy sweet treat. For more ways to enjoy the benefits of citrus, visit curlscorner.com. Still to come, Sacramento's Federalist Pizza is bringing the heat to produce its own Neapolitan-style signature OG fluffy, bubbly crust. And up next, beauty that begins at the farm. We get to the roots of an organic skincare and makeup brand. Home is where you start the day. Out the door, you're on your way. All the places you want to go. Maybe you should take it slow. There's so much to care for in your life. That's why Nationwide is on your side. The California Farm Bureau has protected the diverse agricultural interests in the Golden State for over a century. As part of the California Farm Bureau, you'll add your voice to the combined strength of over 34,000 farmers, ranchers, and families through our state. That means more connections, more influence, and more opportunity to fight for the issues that impact your life. With your support behind us, California Farm Bureau's robust government affairs, federal policy and farm pack, and legal teams work tirelessly to advocate at all levels of government, protecting and promoting our shared way of life. Together, California Farm Bureau and our members are standing up for farmers, ranchers, and families throughout the Golden State every day, working to cultivate a bountiful future for all Californians. Agriculture isn't just what you eat, it's also cultivating many other products, and one Northern California woman is juicing the good stuff 
to fuel her Farm to Beauty mission. We have a 20 acre farm here mm -hmm. and we converted it from the highest level of sustainability to certified organic and it's all grape and olive. In the Sonoma County town of Healdsburg, Karen Benke is deepening the roots of her Juice Beauty brand. Our goal is to fill with the richest, highest organic ingredients known to humankind. So it's already packed with vitamins and minerals and that add more powerful ingredients to that for a lot of reasons. Win, better for your skin, better for wrinkles and blemishes, etc. Win that what's absorbed is helpful and win that we're protecting the earth. But we use fig, we, we, these are just Ooh. feature library, we mm -hmm. buy from other organic farmers. Yeah, but it's like educational too. Yeah. And sage and lavender. An organic, sustainable approach to skincare and beauty. For every chemical ingredient that is commonly used in beauty products, we have found a high efficacy or higher efficacy than conventional chemical and plant-based ingredient that can be sustainably grown. For instance, instead of silicones and dimethicones that are kind of like little plastics that rub across your skin that okay. feel good mm -hmm. when you buy a moisturizer, or a, a primer, or a foundation or something, we use grapeseed and we use coconut alkanes and things like that that not only are better for you, better for the environment, they can be sustainably grown, but better for your skin. Now, while vines in Sonoma are typically associated with wine, at this farm, they're innovating grape benefits, like with the Sagrantino. We're actually growing it and we're harvesting it for the skin. So we plant cover crop specifically for the skin because we don't have to worry about the taste. Mm -hmm. So, and we harvest it specifically for the skin when it has the highest antioxidant level and then we ferment it and we process it with you know, a cold press, reverse osmosis processing specifically for the skin. You already have one of the highest antioxidant grapes grown, which is Sagrantino, and then now we harvest it and grow it so it has the highest antioxidant levels we think in the world, because <laughs> we're doing it just for the face. And of course, high antioxidants fight free radicals, fight wrinkles. A farm to beauty approach which also extends an olive branch. We have 13 varieties of olive trees mm. and um, some that are like super rare also uh -huh. and you know what's kind of cool about this is when we harvest the olives we do it the old-fashioned way they put a tarp down and they rake it Oh. and just like they used to <laughs> in Italy and Greece and everywhere the olive oil is so emollient and so rich and it provides just beautiful age-defying benefits mm. for your skin and without clogging pores. You know, it's not, it's, it just, it doesn't clog your pores. It just really is rich. So Karen, do you consider yourself a farmer at this point? <laughs> <laughs> well, I have to give my husband some credit. I guess I am a farmer at this point. And we are farm to beauty all the way. Juice Beauty is farm to beauty. Juice Beauty's clean approach is attracting A-list attention too. We have some famous uh, uh, partners at Juice Beauty. Um, Gwyneth Paltrow is a shareholder at Juice Beauty. And then Kate Hudson is, is we've been friends for almost 18 years. And we, I met her through, she discovered our products. We created a beautiful, beautiful clarifying, hydrating powder mask and then some cocktail concentrate serums for the skin. And she named it Kate Hudson Heart Juice Beauty and designed the heart. And we sat right there on the bench and that's where we talked about how we were going to launch the product and how we were going to work together. And she's just a great partner. After a tour of the farm, I got the rundown of Juice's organic beauty solutions. We use um, salicylic acid, willow bark, organic fruit acids, things like that to um, clear yet hydrate. Our vitamin C serum, 20% vitamin Ooh, C. Yeah, we want those vitamins. It's amazing. <laughs> we're on the farm, so we're so excited. We came out with our super grape. This is direct farm to beauty. We call it farm to beauty reserve and uh, like a wine that comes off the property. So just do a little wellness, fitness and shake it up. The green apple peel put us on the map. Malic acid from green apples, rich in malic acid, which is great for skin rejuvenation, great for brightening, great for um, exfoliation. As you can see, this is just a beautiful, rich butter balm. What's the farm ingredient in this? So this is sunflowers, blueberries, and rice peptides. Ooh. So, Thanks so much for sharing this with us, Karen. Thank Great. you, Aubrey. We <laughs> love California. We are California through and through. Pretty cool how she's using olives to innovate skincare. Hi, 
I'm Gloria with Olivo Amigo. We're normally used to using balsamic vinegar with salads, but today I'm bringing you a much more fun way of pairing balsamic vinegar, and it is with ice cream. Olivo Amigo is part balsamic vinegar. It's made in Central California by a small family farm. And what makes this ingredient so special is that it's made with balsamic vinegar, but as well with plants and basil. Trust me when I tell you that it's delicious. The plants in the balsamic vinegar brings the sweetness of the fruit. It, it, it almost seems that you're eating the actual fruit. The basil brings the, uh, brings the freshness of the herbs and the balsamic vinegar itself sparks all the ingredients together. So here we're gonna pour it. We have our balsamic vinegar. We're gonna pour it in our ice cream. Don't be scared. Put as much as you can. Trust me that this is delicious. Coming up, a segment that's sure to grab a pizza in your heart, a Midtown sack jam that's putting a hyper-local spin on the pies they're serving up. Sometimes we lose, sometimes we win. Sometimes we try to fit it all in. Sometimes we don't know what's in store. Sometimes we find what we're looking for. Sometimes we're rolling easy and free. Sometimes one and one makes three. So much to love along this ride. That's why Nationwide is on your side. Are you looking to uncover more of the bounty of California's rich, diverse, and delicious food and wine scene? Then it's time to get social with us. Find even more great content from farm to fork and everything in between, like recipes behind the scenes on food and wine tours, plus useful info on what's good for you and so much more. Join an engaging community of like-minded foodies and tell us what great story ideas you have for us too. So what are you waiting for? Get in on the conversation now. Find, follow, and talk to us on social at CA Bountiful. You love your pet and would do pretty much anything for them, but sometimes pet healthcare costs can make your wallet growl. That's why we created My Pet Protection, pet insurance designed exclusively for employees like you. Get reimbursed for eligible veterinary expenses. Enjoy extra perks like Vet Helpline, Pet RX Express, and more. Use any vet anywhere. Signing up is easy. Just tell us about your pet and choose your level of reimbursement. My Pet Protection is available only through your employer. Get a no obligation quote today. Welcome back. Homegrown in the family's backyard with innovative design, it was one of the first shipping container projects in the country. Sacramento's Federalist Pizza is finding success in how they source and serve up their menu. We are making our famous Federalist Margarita Pizza here. Um, this is probably one of the most hyper-local pizzas that we make. And um, everything starts with pizza, with the dough. So we're gonna start here with the dough. Our dough is sourced with flour that's milled and grained out of uh, San Francisco, California. And um, it's a nice, simple recipe, simple um, water, salt, flour, and yeast recipe. A little bit of flour here just to get it dusted. Always making sure that we're pressing out the air from the center of the, the pizza here. Some of the, one of the things we do here at Federalist is make sure that we try to get people um, beautiful, fluffy, crispy um, leopard skin crust. It's one of our signature pieces here. It's something that I think that we do extremely well and it sets us apart a little bit from uh, what everybody else is doing locally. Once the, once the dough's about the size of you know, my hands, getting it in here, I can get it up and walk it on my thumbs. Um, we like to stretch the dough here. We don't like to throw the dough in the air. Uh, there's, a, there's a really interesting, funny story about that. But typically we'll stretch the dough here till it gets about the size of a pizza. Uh, till it gets about the size of a pizza. And that's about, for us, about 12 to 13 inches and that's about a size of a large pizza here, so we're just about there, actually. A little bit small here. Dough's kind of cold. But you can see I can stretch this dough extremely thin. It's extremely strong dough. And there we go. Once we have the dough stretched, we begin with one of the most important things that comes on our margarita pizza, which is our sauce. And our sauce is made from a tomato that's sourced really from my hometown um, near Fireball, California. 
It's a simple sauce. There's no additives to it. It comes straight from uh, Stanislaus Foods, and it's a uh, San Marzano tomato. Uh, I like to call it a Sac Marzano tomato because it's grown near Sacramento and in, in our valley and not an Italian tomato. But it's an Italian style uh, plum tomato that gives you great, great acidity and sweetness. Um, lots and lots of flavor and we don't add anything to it. So we're not cooking it down with garlic or anything like that. It's literally just tomato. Uh, so for our margarita, we'll take our basil. Our basil is uh, from Rado Brothers out in Modesto as well. So Central Valley. And we'll lay those down first so that way they don't burn too bad in the oven. Then we take a fresh mozzarella cheese. So this is fresh cow's milk mozzarella. We'll take a half a ball and we will spread that around generously on the pizza just so we get lots of creamy goodness in every bite. Um, again, at Federalist, we're interested in texture and color and finish and um, how the pizza looks and how the pizza tastes at the same time. And then we finish it off with just a little bit of sea salt just to bring out the acidity in the tomato. Then it goes in the oven. So fire management is probably one of the most important things about how we make pizza. And all of our wood um, is actually Central Valley almond wood. All this almond wood is sourced from the Central Valley. And uh, it gives us the heat and the flavor that we like in our dough. We've used all kinds of different types of hardwoods and we found that almond works the best for us. Um, so now, once we have our pizza out, we're just gonna give it one last little shape here. Um, make sure it's loose on the board so that it slides off easily onto our peel. So we're gonna lift the front end here, make sure it's moving and just kind of slide it gently off onto here. Super simple. Then one more little shape before we put it in the oven that makes sure we have nice beautiful round pizza. Step around here. And right into the oven. So we're looking for differentiation in color, which means differentiation in flavor. We got different flavors, different colors, different textures going on with the pizza. Um, looking for toastiness on the bottom, which was there. And we're looking for some caramelization on the cheese. We're gonna finish the pizza at the top of the oven. This process probably takes less than two to three minutes, right in that range. And that, my friends, is a margarita pizza. That pizza is so good. My mouth waters just thinking about it. And what a great time I've had hosting the show from Thrive City in San Francisco. I just have so much love for the Bay Area. And that is gonna do it for this episode, but you can always find us online at CaliforniaBountiful.com. I'm Aubrey Aquino, and we'll see you next week for more California Bountiful. Take care. <laughs> On the next California Bountiful, we visit a small Southern California hobby farm that's spinning its animal fibers to good use. Plus a locally sourced Central Valley recipe that's got great beets before we learn about the simplest, smallest, and yet most nutritious and delicious plants you can grow. And you don't want to miss our visit to the happiest food and wine festival on earth. It's all coming up on the next California Bountiful.